We will take this opportunity and welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel for an exclusive opportunity with the Chief Executive Officer of Globex Data, Mr. Elaine Guyai. He's uh, been gracious enough to come on and update us on everything going on with Globex Data. They have been super busy. Some incredible news just came through the newswire today. We're going to get into that and much more uh, as we get into it with the CEO, Mr. Elaine Guy. Uh, Elaine, welcome to the channel. Please take your uh, opportunity and introduce the viewing audience to what you've got going on with GlobeX. Thank you, Ryan, and thank you for everyone who's watching us. So welcome. So GlobeX Data is essentially, it started as a Swiss company about 15 years ago. I'm the founder and largest shareholder. It's a privately held company that developed over years, uh, essentially what is now secure, which is a suite of communication product and cloud backup uh, software, such as Secure Suite, essentially for data storage, uh, cloud storage, and also secure email and messaging. So in 2019, in 2012, I, I did a, a creator company in the US and Comcast was one of our first client. Uh, we were on their cloud platform and we just started with this product called Digital Safe, which is now has been morphed into what we call Secure Suite. Decent success, but I think the cloud at that time uh, for mass market was a bit too early. And then in 2019, 2019, uh, actually a couple of years earlier, 2017, we set up a Canadian entity for the sole purpose of going to the stock market, take it public from scratch. So this was not a SPAC or a reverse merger or a shell. It was a pure IPO from scratch. And then from there, the idea was to increase liquidity and raise some cash to really blow this up globally because we had some customers all over the world. So Globex Data LTD, trading under ticker symbol SWISF, is the pop core we're talking about. We're on the OTCQB. We're going to graduate to the QX uh, in Q1 because we already qualify, but we, we need our financials to be completed. So we have now the public entity. It has an exclusive perpetual license for all of the Swiss company's technology against a 10% royalty uh, of sales. So it's like a licensing right in perpetuity. The reason the Swiss company doesn't go public is because that is the company that stores the data, that maintains the data, and it needs to be highly private so that it's not you know, forced by some kind of laws and you know, Patriot Act and whatnot to divulge you know, its own customer's data and whatnot. So for that, we use the Swiss privacy laws. Uh, the product secure, it's a main product. Essentially, it's an email and messaging application rolled into one. We have secure messenger as well. We're launching secure voice for voice encrypted uh, uh, calls and secure pro, which hopefully will replace Zoom for uh, C-level executives, uh, high end. You know, I always say high end because it's gonna be $50 a month per user so it's not cheap, but at least your data is not going to be siphoned to Facebook or to China because we have a data manual. So wh why are we different? Basically, in terms of the product and the architecture of our system. First, we don't host on any of uh, the, the big techs, right? So Amazon Web Service, Google, Microsoft. We have our own platform, our own servers. Now we have no debt, we own everything, and we house everything in multiple data centers in Switzerland. You know, why Switzerland? Switzerland has the highest data privacy laws in the world. And I could hear some bankers coming up and say, well, Switzerland doesn't have any more the banking secrecy laws. It's true, but the banking secrecy laws were enacted in the 30s, um, and they're not part of our constitution. I'm a Swiss citizen myself. so. The constitution is very different than laws that come and go. And I think after 2008, the US actually uh, forced about 130 countries from the OECD to have these kind of cross-border financial exchange. Uh, so, you know, if you're a, a citizen in some country in Belgium, let's say, and you have an account there, now Belgium will tell the US this person has an account and it's totally fine to have an account overseas. But the data laws are very different. So. We have our own proprietary platform. We don't have to comply with the Cloud Act. 
and I'll explain what that is in a minute. We don't use uh, any kind of open source technology. We have our own encrypted uh, technologies that we use, and that means nobody can get in and nobody can get your data. And of course, we don't data mine you. That's why you have to pay us your five, ten dollars a month for the product. So I think that's kind of an overview of the product. The company now is public, obviously. Uh, our goal is to go eventually to the NASDAQ as we grow. Uh, next year, we're going to make some pretty aggressive uh, move towards that, increase sales. We started, we have a $3 million budget next year for advertising in the US. We started in New York and now nationwide. We have customers coming, rolling in every day. And we have about $7 million in cash in the bank today and no debt. So we're in a good position, as a matter of fact. And there's only about 110 million shares outstanding and about 40 to 50 million shares in the float because management, obviously, including myself, own about 35 million shares. They're not going anywhere. And then we have a lot of these long-term shareholders from Europe, a lot of Swiss people, European and others who are basically holding on to, to, to the shares because they believe in the five, 10 year goal of the company. So that, I hope that wasn't too long. Oh, that, that's incredible. Um, you know, anytime I'm reviewing a company and I look at the management and the internal share structure and how it's how it's allocated, you're close to 40 percent. Correct me if I'm wrong, Elaine. And that that just shows me that you've got stake in the game and, and it shows your reputation precedes yourself. You you are a, a hard working man. And uh, it's you. really interesting to see you take this project and have a vested interest in it. Um, all the information that we discuss on this video is going to be provided for any of our viewers uh, down below. So if you hear something that you like and you want more information on it, make sure that you check the description here because we're going to roll out a lot of information. Um, mm -hmm. Stock was up 13% just today. Um, it's up 25% month over month here. So it, it, it's a fast accelerating technology company. And I, I think we're ripe here. And I think as the internet has evolved, I, I think Americans especially, and as globally, the internet is 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 everything that we do. People are starting to kind of draw back a little bit and focus in, in on the importance of our security, not only as personal users, but as business users. Mm -hmm. So Elaine, can you talk a little bit more about the customers who are going to enjoy the uh, secure uh, suite of products? Who are who is your uh, uh, market, and who are you aiming to get to first as you roll this out globally uh, for your uh, secure line of products? That's my favorite question. You can tell I'm a little bit more relaxed now. So <laughs> I I love to talk about our customers because I'm very passionate because I receive feedback. You have people that thank God that we created such a product because essentially yeah. they can finally have a little bit of privacy and security. You mentioned security, which is top priority, but privacy is our mission. You know, we want to be the privacy uh, company, essentially, you know, whether it's email, whether it's uh, other services down the road that we plan to roll out. So our typical customers, so first, you know, I'm going to go back to pre-COVID. So when in 2019, 2018, 2019, as we were building this company to go public, we signed an agreement with the largest telecom operator in Latin America, number seven in the world, called America Movil. It's trading on the New York Stock Exchange under AMX, the ticker. It's got about 270 million subscribers in Latin America and then some in Europe. It used to own TrackPhone in the US. I think they just mm -hmm. sold it this year, last year. So we, this was a two-year deal to even sign with them. But now they're starting to sell our secure messenger. Then we went to South Asia. We were about to have a $3 million a year contract and then COVID hit. Uh, so COVID in the emerging markets has literally wiped out these poor countries financially, economically, and people too. So during that time and during the elections of 2020, when President Trump was going to be uh, again reelected or obviously there were elections, is that in the US, there's at least half of the people that are not fans of being data mined. So we said, you know, there's a business to do in the US to basically say to everyone, hey, we exist, we're here. And for a nominal price, you can have real true privacy and you don't need to give your data to big tech. So this was a polarization, a shift in people's minds slowly. Um, 
Then in January of 2021, there was a WhatsApp incident where WhatsApp decided to essentially force people to accept their terms or their account would be terminated. Now that's a disaster because they have over a billion users. So I think they have 3 billion, I don't know, but some astronomic number. So then people went to signal and again, we realized, hey, the messaging world is gonna start to wake up. There is no privacy in Messenger and they hold you hostage, right? And then there was this other application um, called Parler that was basically booted out of the, this was more of a social media application that was booted out of Amazon Web Service. So essentially, if you're part of those big tech platform, they control you. That's why we're like, okay, well, we have our own platform. We're not slave to anything. We're in Switzerland and we have an amazing product. So let's focus on the US market. This US market shift while the rest of the world was, you know, recuperating from the COVID-19 issue, it basically gave us an opportunity to go right to direct to consumer. So right now in the US, I mean, we went hardcore on advertising. We have a huge billboard on the NASDAQ building, electronic billboard. We're on 200 panels in the subways in New York. We have three, four YouTubers from, uh, you know, some of these publication every day like we have about 15 youtube event every month telling people hey you know because we sponsor some of these speakers hey here's a thing called secure privacy etc and that got us the mass market subscribers right now so we're learning as we go we're learning how we can improve the application so that was phase one phase two which will start in q1 are businesses uh, we did announce that by the end of November, kind of December, we're going to have email uh, domain uh, hosting. So you can be, you know, john at mybusiness.com and you can be on our platform. So that's revolutionary because I think you should understand we have a thing called Secure Send. So Secure Send is a way to send an email to anybody in the world, whether they have Gmail or not or any other email, without the ISP of the recipient being able to read your mail. So essentially, Ryan, I would send you, I use webmail right now for that. So I would send you an email. You're my banker and I need you to wire like some money to another account. This yeah. is a classic email that yeah. individual and businesses obviously use. Yeah. That email right now, if I send it, it's an open postcard when it leaves my server. But with secure send, all the info, all the transactions stays in our servers in Switzerland. And then you get a notification to click on a link and then that link could be password protected. It could have time expiration and so forth. But once you're in, you can read my email, download all the attachment, and you can use secure reply to me. So you can also upload some of your own private financial info, send it to me, and you don't need to have secure without you know having the danger of your information flying on the net. It's kind of what we do with Messenger. We can invite someone to chat with us even if they don't have the app. So right now we have consumers that are privacy sensitive, obviously. Small businesses, I mean, there's that's the big target, small businesses, uh, larger companies as well. And as of today, we announced publicly that we close a government contract in Latin America. And essentially the government was a big thing even before COVID. Those $3 million a year was a government contract in South Asia which we will regain because we have a South Asian telecom operator as a client called Axiata. And we're going to, you know, they do big enterprise and government. So we run the gamut. There's nobody that is not a customer. I mean, maybe people who don't care and they're happy with Gmail and whatnot, sure. But if you want a little bit of privacy as an individual, you have to go to us. A business, it's a no brainer. If you don't want to be hacked and they're hacked every week, these other platforms, you can use our email service. For the messenger, there's no other choice. We're the only company that can guarantee you the privacy and security. You guys are the only ones and you are the best. And there are guarantees with your product. I'm, I'm gonna become a customer. And I'm, Thank you. Uh, as the name implies, I'm the independent. So my independence yeah. means a lot to me. I, I, I feel like we've been swooped up in this world of the internet and I believe that we've, we've sold the farm. For, for a lack of better terms. And I think a lot of people have done so maybe even inadvertently and, and are trying to backpedal a little bit and say, hold on a second, maybe I don't want all my stuff out there. So 
Talk a little bit about once these customers along even the private user all the way up to the large government entities and the small businesses and large businesses in between, once these folks get your product in their hands, they don't go away. In no. other words, your your product is sticky. And I, I want you to talk a little bit. We, we've got to mention Remax because what a statement for those realtors to be able to put your product in their hands and, and to ensure that conversations that go from realtor to client yeah. are secured with the best platform in the world. I mean, you have realtor, you have, so if we want to start to, you know, uh, name dropping, as we say, socially. So we got a few little big names, right? We got America Movial, 280 million subscriber. That's yeah. not bad. Carlos Slim, the, the, the multi-billionaire who owns the empire, is definitely an intelligent man and saw something that's worth it. Uh, we're just starting now. We've got two other distributors in Latin America. We started with Mexico. It's going to be Colombia, Panama, all over. Yep. Axiata, the largest South Asian telecom operator with 150 million subscribers. Their Sri Lanka division with 17 million subscribers started. We're finishing integration now. In Q1, we're going to start. They're going to go pure enterprise and government. I've been in Sri Lanka, delightful country, easy to work with the government. They understand. And they still use way back outdated Outlook servers. So imagine um, they have a new president who was their uh, defense secretary, who's an IT specialist too, which is interesting. US educated IT guy became president of Sri Lanka. So I have great relationships there. Now, the names, Remax, Axiata Telecom, to some people, it won't mean much, but for all of Asia, it does mean a lot. America Mobile, if you've got a cousin in Mexico someplace or anywhere in Latin America, the brand is called Claro. They also operate in the US. That's a name. We have also Keller Williams, but they have been a bit quiet. But Remax is more aggressive. Remax, we basically are on a platform that Remax chose uh, to, to, to launch cloud application. And they have 90,000 realtors. So we're on their US and Canadian platform. In Q1, when we launch our brand new email application, we're going to go ballistic on these realtors and mortgage brokers. We can't forget the mortgage broker because, you know, they send applications back and forth to the poor customer. You know, you're going to buy a $2 million home and you have your tax return. Somebody's going to want to know what kind of money you got in that bank, right? So, yep. you know, this is an amazing product for them. And the fact that the customer doesn't need to have secure is huge for them. Yeah. Even when they message, I mean, you can create a group on secure messenger, you chat by invite, you receive a text and you say, Hey, Ryan, your realtor wants to add you to a group. You chat really quickly. Okay. You got approved for the mortgage. Thank you. And then you delete the whole convo. It disappears everywhere. That's priceless. And then when you're going to send these application back and forth, so it's just going to be the start. There's also financial organization, law firms, and medical. And we have not scratched the surface. Mm -hmm. Our goal with the money that we have and the warrants that are, ex are going to be exercised in 2023, another 10 million US dollar coming. So we have plenty of cash to exercise our plan. And we want to go heavy on the small business and larger ones. The other day I was talking to someone and they were looking at a platform for millions of small business. And they were discussing that potentially secure could be good as a part of the offering of the membership, you know, so you get a discount on secure. Now imagine it's just unreal, right? And we're just talking about the U S here. Latin America has half a billion people. Uh, most of them speak the same language, except in Brazil. And when one country takes it, another one does. So, this is this is something that is just the beginning and what we try to do is first have a solid foundation have a good product always improve on the product uh, the email application that's coming in q1 the reason why we have our own email app is because a lot of the consumers don't know how to configure an email with an imap and it's more of a business thing you know most people they go to gmail they download thank you very much so we want to make it as easy as Gmail. And I'd like to talk about a couple other product, if I may, that some people have misconception on. Um, one of them is Signal. So Signal, there was an article that came today or yesterday 
that now they're going back to close, uh, close uh, source or whatever, they need to make money, right? So if it's an open source product, which is already bad enough in terms of security, but you can't have these, you know, scanning devices on, on this thing. So if you, if you do that, the developers get all upset and like, hey, you can't do that. You know, you're gonna be like Apple now. So now they're exactly doing that. They're gonna do whatever they want with your data. It's also Amazon hosted, so there's no privacy. And the other product uh, called Proton Mail. We get a lot of Proton Mail subscriber that come to us. And the Proton, uh, ten years ago, whenever when they came out, it was started by a Chinese scientist and a U.S. citizen in Geneva, um, because there's a big science center in Geneva with ten thousand scientists from all over the world. Uh, that's where they had the hydro collider and the the, the particle uh, collider, and essentially they set up a server in Geneva. Great idea. Uh, they got hacked twice already, and it's essentially a big open source system. And we don't have proof, but when we look at their VPN and everything, it screams AWS. Also, the pricing is not that great. You get five gig of storage for $8. But Proton is not what you think. They, they, they're not, they're open source. So even if Amazon is in Switzerland, because they're all over the world, Yes, technically the servers may be in Switzerland, but when you use AWS, it's kind of all over the map. And also, uh, they don't have the secure send feature, uh, data archiving. We have some enterprise features in our email, which I don't want to get too much into detail here. It'll bore you guys. But it's the kind of stuff that a big bank might want, a government might want. So, you know, if you think that Proton Mail is Swiss private secure, you might as well come to secure because that's when you're going to get the real platform that is not part of big tech and that is not an open source system where anybody can come in and hack you. They got hacked twice too. This is all public information. Also, they don't encrypt the email when it leaves. They don't have that. Uh, so this is literally you go on the, on the internet, you can read people complaining, developer, uh, AWS developers talking about that and all that. So. You know, we are the only platform. I really maintain that. I know it sounds crazy, but we're the only one. And, you know, why somebody doesn't come tomorrow, spend 100 million bucks and duplicate what we have? I have a simple answer. The venture capitalists that come in and give billions to 20-year-old kids to develop application, they don't want to spend 50 million on a platform when you can rent space on Amazon for five grand a month. Yeah. It makes no sense. When we built our system, that was over a decade ago, yeah. right? And also we have our philosophy and our mission. Um, and, you know, that's why, well, the company is private over there, right? So they, they, there's no outside money coming in. The only thing is as a public company now we have investors, but that's really more the sales arm of everything. So it's important to understand why somebody cannot come and just duplicate what we have. I've heard you ask that question on many interviews, Elaine, and I love your answer to it. Um, I would double down on it and say that you guys don't have any competition. You guys have first mover advantage. These these other two that you mentioned, Proton and Signal, they're they're not in your guys' wheelhouse at all. No. Um, you you guys do, and I gave you credit for the the decade of pedigree that you've built up in the infrastructure, and really putting this proprietary vo vo virtual vault technology to work. You guys are the lone player in the space. We're we're the lone wolf, as they say. So virtual virtual vault, as as it's. A, I'm glad you pointed it out. So virtual vault, what is it? It's essentially when you use any service out there, and you're in a database. Let's say that database is highly secure. When they get a hit, essentially everybody, all of us are in one big room. So imagine if there's a missile coming in a you know banquet room and everybody is dead or a virus, right? Yep. What we do is each user is independently protected. It's, it's outlandish what we do because nobody in their right mind would do that. It takes so much processing power. And, but what happens is that if we get hit, we have DDoS attacks on a daily basis, but we have never been successfully hacked. And one of the reasons is because we don't use open source. The other one is because we're not on the big tech platform. And of course we have great technology, but let's say somebody hacks us. You and I are in the same database. Maybe they get to you or to me first, 
But machines don't spend hours trying to reach one user. They move on, right? So let's say if I'm being compromised, which by the time they go through the many layers, probably my stuff is moved on. But if I get compromised and you're right next to me in that virtual database, you're not affected. It's like having a moat and walls and walls and electrified fences around each user. That creates, that takes a lot of processing power, which we're happy to uh, provide. We just spent a million bucks on a bunch of servers that we're gonna ship in Switzerland in, in Q1. And these are state-of-the-art server technology, all of that. And now the Helix technology, so that's for the storage. The Helix is a way to connect to Switzerland because what's our concept? You and I are in different countries right now, but if we use Secure Messenger, we will both be in Switzerland. Why? Yeah. All technologies use PGP or some form of what they call pretty good privacy. Pretty good privacy doesn't inspire confidence. Pretty good is not excellent for me, but it's called PGP. And what happened is you take your device, they encrypt it, and then you send an email from your encryption that's done on device. The device doesn't have the processing power of millions of dollars of machine. It's like having a little, you know, Fiat as opposed to having a Hummer, right? We have the Hummer, we have the Mercedes, you know, we have like the Land Rover Defender, okay? And the other person has a tiny Fiat, which will get you from A to B, but it can't withstand all the shocks and all the terrain. You know, the Land Rover Defender can do that. So what happened is when you encrypt from the device and you send your key back and forth to the other person, which all of these systems use, they're very weak encryption because encryption, the best encryption is done by the best processing power. So what we do, we first connect to Switzerland through this tunneling thing. In fact, it's called a tunneling. We use the, we call it the Helix because we use 2048 bit encryption and we wrapped it around multiple layers of our own secret sauce, our own encryption. So once we're both you and I in Switzerland, the communication happens only in the server. Nothing leaves the net. So even, I mean, you never know, but even if somebody tries to sniff back it, it's just gibberish, it's all encrypted. So we're the only ones with, with that kind of technology. We spend a lot of money maintaining it. And that's why we have to charge you, you know, five, 10 bucks a month. As we bring this home, Okay, and we draw down, kick it into Q4 uh, for 2021 and rolling into 2022 for you, Elaine. The, the value that you've got here with the prop, the value proposition at Globex with the stock trading at close today at 40 cents. Okay, talked about up listing to the quality board markets and then an ultimate listing to, to NASDAQ. As we kind of close down this interview, I want to give you the opportunity to talk about your long-term vision for the company, Elaine, because you've got staying power. OK, I think once these people get the, your product in their hands, it's going to be with them for the rest of their life. And that's that's a powerful product. Furthermore, you don't need to sell it one on one at, at your five or six dollar subscription. Yeah. You've got your path, uh, your um, your uh, distribution agreements, whereas your customers, it's going to be like the domino effect as your product gets out there and they understand how good it is. It, you're going to have people creating that demand in the marketplace. So if you want to go ahead, please just address anything that we've missed in the interview. Phenomenal company. I, I, I was so stoked to do the deep dive on your company, and I'll Thank continue you. to be a, a student of your company. 2020, 20, 2022 is going to be a barn burner year for you guys. You've got a ton of stuff going on. It's, it's just not being realized in the marketplace. So if you can kind of talk a little bit about the long-term vision, I know 2022 is right around the corner, but it's going to be a big year for you guys. So if you want to give us that vision for you, from your perspective, I think the viewers would get a lot of benefit out of that. Gladly. So 2020, we finished the year with a market cap of $6 million US. Today, we have a market cap of 40, 45 million. So I always like to say to my dear shareholders, because I don't take a salary and I don't take a no. consulting fee. I have my own thing and I'm a salary in Switzerland. I'm okay. I don't need to take from the Popco. I have a lot of shares and option. So we increased the market cap by 500%. Our cash went from 400,000 US end of December, 2020 to now $7 million US. So we went up by what? 1,500, 50, 180%, 15, mm -hmm. 15, 17 times the cash. We have no debt. And now we have customers on a daily basis. And this, uh, the, obviously the, 
the, the, the share price went up too. The market cap went up because we raised some money, but also the share price went up. So now we are ready for 2022. What are we planning? So 2022, end of Q1, we're going to have our big email application uh, concluded. And that was one thing that Proton has. They have an app. We don't, but that's going to be, you know, history yeah. after Q1. That's we're right. going to go after businesses. We, we have those 30 million businesses in the U.S. We're going to target the top 10% and hopefully close 10% of those. If we can close in 2022, 100 to 200,000 business users, that's fantastic. We're also going to go uh, into the different boards, obviously, as we discussed, the exchanges, etc. For that, you need funds, you need capital, you need bankers. I already have that lined up. So... I haven't shown up in New York yet, and I already have about one of them that will do the deal in five minutes. But we're looking at the best investment house, maybe doing syndicate. The goal is for us to raise. Again, it's a goal. It's not a guarantee. Mm -hmm. 20 to $50 million on the uplisting, then acquire more customer, then maybe you know get another 50 from warrants that would be exercised. And the two-year time frame is this is to basically gain about half a million people. Our cost of acquisition, retail, that's full, you know, throw on mud on the wall to see if it sticks without any refining or anything, is about $70 per person, which is amazing because the lifetime value of a client is like 3,000 bucks when you think about it. They pay us $120, $150 a year and they don't really leave. Uh, we're also launching in Q2, end of Q2, secure voice, encrypted voice. For $20 a month, you'll have encrypted voice, you'll have the message and the email, and then Secure Pro, which is a replacement of Zoom for, you know, you got public company, high level executives, etc. That may be, they don't want to use Zoom, right? Because it's totally data mined and, and they, they sell that data to everyone. So we're going to launch that by the end of Q2. Then we're going to go hardcore overseas. Latin America is starting to sell. South Asia is going to start in Q1, Q2. So we're going to have that as a top line revenue. Um, and we plan to be, even though we're spending, you know, 300,000 a month in advertising and branding, et cetera, which is well worth it. Half of our subscribers now are coming from advertising. So they don't have a promo code. That's how we know. They literally come because they heard about us. Yeah. So, you know, even after spending all of that, we plan to be profitable uh, in Q1, Q2 of 2024. And I don't know if you know this, but when a SaaS company is profitable, uh, the valuations are very generous in the U.S., right? So that's okay. what I want to move towards. Uh, and in, the, in Canada, we're probably going to move to a higher exchange, but that could be in 2023. Right now, we're happy where we are. We want to focus on the U.S. So a lot of good things happening. We also have a research report coming up, I forgot to mention, probably in the next couple of weeks, a real good research report with a target a price target, an analysis. I don't know the price target. I have an idea, but I cannot disclose anything of here. Of um, so this is just the beginning. I mean, we have no debt, cash in the bank, uh, money being thrown at us, but we want to do things step by step. You know, the Swiss way, you first move one, two, three, and then when you're really solid and your market cap is like $100 million or something, then you can talk to a banker to give you 20, 30, $40 million to grow the business to the next level. Yep, yep. Uh, it, it, incredible story. Um, this is an exclusive, and uh, I want you back on the channel, Elaine. Yeah, it's exactly. an open door policy. We'll, we'll share your story all day. Investors, retail investors who I advocate for, they need to hear your story. Um, because just like me, there's thousands and thousands of people out there who don't know you exist. So That's that it. marketing, yeah. yeah, that marketing campaign, if you'd be so kind as to point our would-be uh, investors and anybody interested in your product, um, where can they find more information, Elaine, please? You can go to globexdata.com. Uh, you can go to the investor page and you can even download our latest investor presentation. Um, most of the news is updated there. We have a bunch of interviews and whatnot as well. Uh, you can also go to any kind of, I use Yahoo Finance, you can put ticker Swiss F and read all the news. I for, can I mention something critical, which I forgot? We have Please. our own TV show every week. That's part of the branding. So on Newsmax and then on Fox Business 
and Bloomberg, Newsmax is every Sunday, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. East Coast. We have the secure segment. Uh, it's an amazing branding opportunity because we talk about the hack of the week and then we talk about secure. What do we have that can protect you from a hack like that? And then we have an interview out of the NASDAQ headquarter by a very respectable journalist named Jane King. Uh, she basically interviews me every week. And then we talk about the company progress. And usually there's always a bit of a hacking talk. I just taped the show today. Uh, and uh, next, this coming Sunday on the secure segment, we wanted to talk about the holidays and credit card and how to protect yourself. I give a few tips. So having that, and I got the info today, there were 25,000 people who watched our show last weekend. Now this has just started for the next years, years to come. We're going to build an audience of 100 or 200,000 people. And we want to help people say, hey, you know, it's not about just selling a product. We, say, we can sell that all day long. Get informed about cybersecurity. Protect your privacy. Protect your data. So that's something that we're going to expand even more in 2022. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Wow, that, that's fantastic. Uh, Alain Guy, CEO of uh, Globex Data, it has been an absolute honor to have you on the channel. And I guarantee there's going to be investors out there that are in debt to you, as I am. I thank you so much for making your way onto the channel, Elaine. Have a great evening. Thank you, Ryan. And thanks, everyone, for watching.